it's just about psychological uh, aspects of aging and, uh, you know, fighting age-related disease or feeling or becoming younger. Can our thoughts change our epigenome? And like, if we just can, you know, conditioning ourselves that to be like a younger version of ourselves, where we have like a target psychological age, which is lower than our calendar age, uh, can it really affect the process of aging or uh, affect our epigenome? Uh, I think that there's some emerging uh, literature that really does demonstrate mm -hmm. that the, the age that uh, by which we uh, consider ourselves, in other words, if we consider ourselves to be biologically younger than our chronological age, mm -hmm. that that's been demonstrated, we call that age identity, that's been demonstrated in several uh, studies to actually be related to some positive uh, issues. For example, a Korean study that appeared in 2018 uh, I think it was Aging Neuroscience, looked at uh, individuals who indeed considered their biological age, their age identity was, was younger than their actual chronological age, and they had actually a significant thickening of their brain's gray matter in comparison to those mm -hmm. who felt that their age was uh, appropriate for the chronological age or perhaps considered their biological age to be older. Uh, we've seen uh, other studies, uh, National Institutes in, on Aging uh, did a study involving several thousand individuals showing that having this younger concept of your or conception of your of your age was related to lower um, prevalence of uh, heart, uh, rather kidney and liver disease. And uh, even uh, a study at, at Florida State University demonstrated that there was a, actually in those individuals who had this younger perception of their age, their risk of dying was so significantly oh. lower. So, uh, but it, it's always cause, a cause and effect, I think, a type of discussion that should naturally follow from these uh, research studies. And that is, do you uh, conceive of your biological age as being younger because yeah. Yeah. good things are happening in your body, yeah. sending good chemicals to your brain, yeah. making you feel better? Uh, so it, it's, it's, it, but I think to answer your question, um, I mean, we certainly have seen this uh, in terms of telomere length, if, yeah. if uh, that's a valid uh, marker of health or age, and I think we could certainly challenge that, but at that study, those series of studies actually uh, were, have caught the popular press's eye that, you know, just thinking you're healthy, thinking you're younger biologically has been associated with longer telomeres. Yeah, well, that's great. I have like a separate chapter in in my new book, uh, The Science and Technology of Growing Young. It's it's actually called Think and Grow Young. And that's a fascinating topic. There's so many interesting uh, things that I've discovered uh, uh, on that. So, and I do believe that it's it can be our choice. Like, for example, just a few years ago, I've decided my target uh, age is 25, which is crazy. Uh, for even the fact that I'm 49 now uh, and uh, you know what it just really changed my life in terms of level of energy aspiration to the world and I you know, um, need to look at my biomarkers but I try to influence obviously my aging process from so many perspectives it's just very difficult to uh, understand most like the main livers but uh, it's been an exciting experience great well, uh, I, yeah, I think uh, Sergey uh, that um you know, the challenge has always been, how do we chart aging? How do we measure mm -hmm. it? And, and what are the metrics by which we're able to say that a particular intervention may or may not be effective? And, and certainly I would suspect that the viewers of uh, our time together today are, are familiar with so-called methylation clocks, the, mm -hmm. these methylation patterns of our DNA as described by Dr. Stephen Horvath. And I will call attention to a, a recent paper that came out probably a month ago by Dr. Kara Fitzgerald, uh, where she demonstrated that uh, an eight uh, week program mm -hmm. uh, that involved a specific dietary uh, intervention, uh, exercise, meditation, uh, was actually associated with a dramatic reduction on, using the Horvath clock of 3.1 years in comparison to controls, uh, even after that short interventional period. Oh, wow. Uh, I, and I, I would think obviously, and you're, I'm sure, well aware that there are multiple studies going on looking at what can these interventions be that can, in fact, 
uh, reposition these methyl groups in such a way that it correlates with what um, machine learning has demonstrated would otherwise correlate with a particular age. So um, I think that that really opens the door uh, to understanding that the, the whole science of the epigenome and these methylation patterns, not only as a marker of age, but beyond that, what types of technology exist today to bring about these changes.